In the meantime, we move on to Rob Marciano, who's also on the ground. Millions are leaving their homes. Evacuation orders underway. You can imagine the traffic backed up on highways for miles. Uh, senior meteorologist Rob Marciano with those families, and Rob is in St. Petersburg tonight. Tonight, highways jammed with families evacuating in the Sunshine State. Millions of Floridians in the crosshairs of major Hurricane Ian. A mandatory evacuation has been ordered. Please leave this area. We have uh, about 2.5 million Floridians that are currently uh, under uh, some type of an evacuation order. Ian's fluid forecast track and timing has forced residents to get out sooner, making for a scramble inland and really bogged up traffic here on Interstate 4, tripling the travel time into Orlando. St. Petersburg's mayor putting it bluntly for those who don't evacuate. After a certain time when and tropical force winds are here, we will not be sending out first responders. At McDill Air Force Base, the military flying aircraft out of harm's way. Power crews staging in this Sarasota parking lot. Our Victor Akendo in Cape Coral, where Ian's new track means they are now bracing for up to 12 feet of storm surge. Cape Coral is a unique town built on a 400 mile system of canals like this one. Storm surge and flooding is a major concern, so they'll be relying heavily on these. They're called weirs, and they can be lowered or raised to help control the flow of water. You want me to help you load this up? If you can. Yeah, sure, no problem. In nearby Fort Myers, Victor meeting John Robles, scrambling to help a friend board up now that they're in the bullseye. Now, I hope we don't get hit so bad, you know what I'm saying? Did you feel like you were in the clear At yesterday first, yeah. and yeah. now you're right in the path? And today, I got better go get it before it's too late. Argio Benitez at Tampa's airport, one of several shutting down. The airport's looking pretty empty. The last flight's taking off just before 5 p.m. Orlando's airport also shutting down tomorrow morning. This storm is affecting nearly every airport in the state. The main message I have for everyone in Florida is that this is going to impact everyone in different ways. Outer bands from Ian now reaching from the Keys to Orlando. This possible tornado west of Miami. After barreling across Cuba like a buzzsaw, Nothing in Ian's path now except warm water in Florida. Yeah, this is really something already seeing those funnel clouds. Rob with us live from Sarasota tonight. Rob, you mentioned the extremely warm water fueling this hurricane, the intensification that continues. Uh, what kind of temperatures are we looking at? And really, there's nothing left to sort of shear off any of the strength of this storm, is there? No, not really, David. This pool of warm water has only expanded in the past week. If you take a look at this map, it's right in the path of Hurricane Ian. 85 to 90 degree water temperatures. That's about two degrees above average. So climate change certainly playing a role in supercharging these storms. We do have a, a bit of shear that will nudge it to the east, but I don't think it's enough really to knock it down. So this is going to come ashore as a major hurricane. It's going to have major life-threatening destructive impacts. David? Rob, we're glad you're there. Please stay safe as well. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.